Hey everyone, this is a Porsche 930 CV with a screwdriver sticking out of it. Just pretend this is a spline, it's just the only thing that I had that fit that properly. Um, the reason I bring this up today, it's a real short video, is I, I've been trying to find a solution for the axles for the race car. And once you go, this is just a super cheap joint here, but once you go to something that'll support Porsche 930 CVs, you have an absolute enormous world of options for lightweight joints, um, <clears throat> vent, not vented, um, finned joints, you have high strength joints, you have race prepped joints, you have joints that are made for operating in salt water. Um, it, it's just, it's literally the, the CV joint that has pretty much the most options to it. Now, there's also the 934, and I think the size 30 joint that also have a lot, but even those don't have as much as this. And from what I can tell, this won't support quadruple digit horsepower, but it'll get close. So what bugged me about these is this is a plunging joint. You can see, see the inner race can go in and out. And, but you may have noticed something right there. I always assumed since this looked just like the inner joint on the MR2 turbo that it acted the same, but check that out. If you do that to the MR2 turbo joint, it, it falls apart. This one is designed, you can see the, the balls actually contact the inner race before coming apart and it does it on both ends. So that's how they're doing it. That's how they're running plunge joints on both ends and the axle shafts just floating in between. Now, I was speaking to the guys over at uh, uh, RCV Performance I was speaking to the guys there and kind of asking about it and it turns out these plunging joints run a lot cooler and it's, I actually I'm not even going to speculate as to why it runs cooler, but they do run cooler. And my question then today, now that I receive this joint and it maxes out, well, what's going to happen, you know, when you run a, a U joint to its limit, it starts acting funny, even though it'll still transmit power. but if we're depending on this, you know, not slamming back and forth, how much angle can we put on it before it starts, you know, doing something funny? So I figured I've got the lathe set to 60 RPM here and I found something that fits conveniently and we can just very gently test what the max angle is in a, in a very careful situation here until this starts acting funny and my fingers aren't in the way. You know, what's the worst going to happen? I'm going to crash the lathe with the, I mean, the screwdriver is plastic. It's just going to break. It's acetate. So, uh, we'll put the uh, lathe brake on. It's going to get a bit noisy in here. Um, so I'll probably switch to a voiceover. All right. So as expected, it doesn't come apart at either end of the travel. And more importantly, if we push on this, it's really not moving in and out any appreciable amount. And we've already got some angle on it. What happens if we keep putting angle on it? And there is just a little bit of play at this end here. It's not enough to matter for the sake of this discussion. Oh, there it is. Do you see that? See how it's pushing in and out? So I'd say that's... We want to run under that angle. Now, that looks like a lot of angle to me. And conveniently, we have something to measure it. So. Now we're going to have to do it vertically to measure it. You know, I, I can't present this to the camera. I got to read it. So, we've got zero degrees. So there it is, about 13 degrees. Yeah, let's see if you guys could see that. Uh, no, the angle is going to be too shallow to the screen. Um, you'll have to take my word on it. So about 13 degrees in one direction. So a total of 26 degrees of angle is what we're looking at. Now, let's see what happens when we get a little bit more extreme. Oh yeah, it just gets worse. 
yeah, now surely you can see that on screen. You know, just basically look right at the end here. But interestingly, even after we're at this point, the joint isn't falling apart. So that's really interesting. All right, let me stop the noisemakers in here. So there it is. I'm so glad I've got that mystery solved at this point. I'm just gonna have to uh, see what I can do about getting some stubs made. Um, I don't know if this is gonna be a production product or not. If you guys wanna leave some comments down below if this is something you guys would be interested in, um, you know, there's, there's three ways for me to approach this. I can do it as a prototype run just for both my cars, conveniently, uh, EV, as well as uh, Tanya, the second gen and the third gen, will both handle this because the uh, naturally aspirated second gen MR2 spline is the same on the outside as it is on the uh, third gen, as well as the first gen for that matter. So the same, the same drive flanges will work in both cars. Um, and if the E350 transmission that I'm looking at ends up working out, then the same inner stubs will also work. So who knows, I, you know, I could do those in a prototype quantity. I could do those as a single one-off run and just kind of, you know, see who wants to sign up as a one-time thing, or I could make them a product. So um, tell me below what you guys care about, um, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, other than that, if you look down here, 5,000, guys. <laughs> we did it. There's 5,000 of you guys that clicked that button uh, somewhere over there that said you guys want to listen to me more. So that's, that's awesome. I really appreciate it, guys. Um, let's, uh, let's keep doing this. And if you're interested in some of these, uh, shorter discovery videos that I make, uh, tell me about that also. There's, there's often a lot of little things that like this that come up that I just don't feel is worthy of a full video. So, but this one had been bugging me for years. So have a good one. We'll see you guys later. Other than that, <laughs> if you, wait. Other than that, if you look...